So you've just landed a nice trout and released it to live to fight another day. You have that contented feeling that follows success, but at the same time enough empathy for the plight of this noble creature to release it unharmed. But is it really unharmed? And did you consider just how you went about this highlight of your fishing day and the ramifications of your handling of it? Many of us are probably guilty in our early angling years of failing to give due consideration and care to the welfare of what is a fairly delicate creature. In speaking recently with mate and fellow guide Quentin Forster, it was clear he felt strongly about this important topic, and it was maybe time to have a look at what is really an important and often emotive issue. With the Keep Em Wet initiative gaining momentum around the world, it's vital we release all our fish with the respect and care they deserve. The grip and grin shot is still sought by many anglers, including my clients, and it's not for me or anyone else to dictate just how your photo should look, should you choose to take one. Therefore, as a guideline, here are a few important steps to follow in the capture, photography and release of your trout. Step 1. Use appropriate tippet strength to facilitate the quick landing of any fish. Step 2. Understand just how much pressure you can put on a fish. It's normally a lot more than you think if you use the correct right angles. Step 3. Use a soft mesh landing net and wet well before capture. Step 4. Keep the fish's head underwater throughout until the photograph is taken. Step 5. Wet your hands thoroughly before handling the fish. Step 6. Gently lift the fish for a count of 6 for the photo and gently release it back into some current and oxygenated water. As a side note, the use of gloves has stirred controversy around the world. But for New Zealand, I certainly use them and encourage my clients also to do so. As the trout here are big, robust fish that will kick about, especially if played quickly. And dropping fish on rocks will happen if bare hands are used. Cradling the fish with hands under the pectoral fins but away from the gills keeps the fish from squirming as much as they do when pressure is placed on their stomach. I see the same fish caught sometimes more than once in a season and never see handling marks on these fish, which is testament to a system working well. Oh yeah, just let him go now. Oh, let go. <laughs> Hold on. Oh mate, so we just landed a fish. Um, probably a good time to talk about fish handling. Um, we've landed this fish, seeing him in the net cradled like that in the current so that he's um, he's recovering with the flow coming down over his gills. Um, that's something you always do, isn't it? Absolutely. Try and kick them um, out away from the edges where uh, 
that they run the risk of being dropped and hitting rocks and things like that if we can keep them out away from the shallow water and, and a reasonable depth we can sit them in the net. Definitely better for the fish. Yep, so he's recovering after a bit of a battle. Uh, we've kept him in the net the whole time. Um, so he's in good shape. And uh, he's, so that you can see his gills are working really nicely. He's relaxed. He hasn't been out of the water. And for purposes of taking a photograph, um, we'd literally step in, grab him by the tail, cradle his body under the, the fins, careful not to make sure you don't squeeze the body at all. Take him up for a, for a quick photograph like that. I always make a slow count to six, and that's enough. Then he goes in. Away. It's in good shape. It's in swimming against the current. We've got a lot of um, oxygenated water coming down over his gills, and he's swimming off to his freedom. Yep, he is.